Hey everybody, welcome back to another Making Stuff video. It has been a while since I have done any work on the big behemoth back here, but today I am back in the shop. We're gonna be working on this, so let's head on over here and get started. All right, so it's time to start on the Z-axis, and what I would like to do is build one exactly like the CNC plasma, but I'm gonna have it on a bigger scale, and instead of a plasma torch, it would of course have a spindle mounted to it. So I've got links to all these pieces and parts that I'm fixing to show you in the description of the video. And there's also a running total and bill of materials over on the Making Stuff webpage. So head over there or down in the description and check those links out if you're interested in getting any of these parts for yourself. Now to start out, I've got a piece of four and a quarter by three eighths aluminum. That's gonna be the main base plate for my Z axis. And I've got these 10 millimeter pillow blocks and a 10 millimeter T-nut in this coupler. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount those to the plate and then I'm gonna reuse these linear rails. These are the linear rails that were from the nail gun robot. So this will be the third time that I've used these. Hopefully this will be their permanent home and I'm going to cut them to size so they will fit in between these two pillow blocks and mount on the side of the plate here. Then of course I'm going to connect my motor up to the coupler right here and then I'll have a plate that will mount to the T-nut and then on that plate I will put the spindle and then that's what's going to give the spindle this Z-axis movement. Alright so it is time to start drilling some holes in my aluminum and it was very tempting for me to go to SketchUp and draw where I needed the holes, make a DXF file and head over to the MPCNC. But I haven't had too good luck cutting aluminum on the MPCNC. And if you want to see that video, I've got a link to it right here. And I'll also put a link down in the description of the video. So what I decided to do instead is I have made this template and I am just going to tape it to the front and then cut my aluminum and then I will have all of the holes marked here that I need to drill and I'm going to just head over to the drill press and do this manually and I think with the use of the template I can get it done just as accurate as the MPCNC but much quicker and with much less headache. All right, so let me take a quick break and explain what I'm doing here. This is the face that's going to have the linear rails, the T-nut, the pillow blocks on it. And this is the plate that's going to have the motor on it. And it needs to mount right here on top, like so, at a 90 degree angle. So I've drilled my three holes here. And rather than just putting this plate on here, taking my transfer punch and marking all three holes and hoping that I don't move this around in the process, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the line that I scribed on top here with the center of one of these holes. And then when that's centered, I'm going to take my transfer punch, I'm going to mark that one hole, then I'm going to go and drill and tap it. Then when I come back, I'm going to take a screw, put it in here and tighten it down, and then line up the other two holes with that line that I scribed on this surface right here. And what that'll do is the screw will act as a clamp and that's a way that I can get more accurate holes drilled into this piece because I really don't have a clamp where I can clamp this and also hold it down in my vise at the same time to ensure that this doesn't move while I'm marking the holes with the transfer punch. All 
All right, so that worked out pretty good. I got it on the first try. I've got my three screws here. The holes are drilled and tapped in this piece of aluminum. The plate is mounted and I have got a 90 degree angle. So I am ready to continue by drilling some holes in this plate so that I can mount the stepper motor. I'm sure you guys have noticed that these screws stick up above the surface of this plate and yes they interfere with the motor mounting on top of this plate so what I did is I ordered some flathead screws like this and that order came in today and I just ordered a little assortment and I will put a link to those in the description of the video so right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove these screws countersink the hole and then install these flathead screws and then that way the motor will mount with no interference up here on the top. So I've got the z-axis working and completed it's time to mount the spindle to it but I need to fix something here real quick and what I noticed was just as a personal preference I wanted everything to clear the end of this plate meaning this direction when this is fully retracted and I did that but I forgot to take into account the length of the bits and that can add anywhere from an inch to two and a half three inches depending on which bit that I'm using and I'm losing that much clearance on my z-axis when this is fully retracted up this way. So what I need to do is move the spindle up a little bit on the z-axis, but these screws are sticking up and it's preventing me from doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this plate off and I'm going to countersink these holes and then use these flathead screws like I did on the motor mount and then that will allow me to move the spindle up on the z-axis a little bit. All right, so I got that done off camera because I figured watching me drill more holes in this video would probably be pointless. And as you can see, this is nice and flat and I can mount this spindle much higher up on the z-axis. 
Okay, so now that the Z-axis is complete, I need to mount it to this plate right here, but I can't do that right now because there's an issue with the gantry that I'm going to fix in the next video because this video has gone on long enough. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up, and if you aren't a subscriber, please consider subscribing and ringing that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos, and thanks for watching.